Hello everyone, uh, Thomas Wimes here. I'm a professor at uh, UC Santa Barbara and also the um, founder of Santa Barbara Nutrients. I'm actually here at the Maloya Palace um, at a conference from um, the Keto Life Project, um, which is really amazing, an amazing um, organization that is uh, really pioneering um, ketogenic metabolic um, therapies um, for all kinds of um, conditions. <clears throat> And um, so we're doing an expert week here. Um, you know, I'm a kidney expert, would you have known? And um, contributing to um, you know, getting this, um, this whole project up and running, um, which is really amazing. There are lots of great minds here, lots of um, pioneering uh, doctors and so on. And um, today in a break <clears throat> that we had in the schedule, um, we, you know, a few of us were uh, walking up a mountain. This happens to be in Switzerland, by the way, a beautiful location. Um, we're going up a mountain um, to a castle to, you know, take a look at it. And I was talking <clears throat> on the way up um, with Aaron Maurer, um, who I've had known for a while, you know, through Zoom. Never met in person, uh, first time, which was uh, really awesome. And um, so I asked her on the way up, um, hiking up, um, you know, hey, what um, actually I never asked you, what uh, brought you to Keto? <clears throat> So um, I got a really, really long answer, uh, but a really amazing answer back um, from Erin. Um, so just an incredible, incredible um, story of her, her life, um, really, and her family's life, um, which I wanted to share with you. So um, hang on tight and uh, listen to Erin. All right. Hello. <clears throat> um, hello, everyone. Um, Thomas Wimes here. Um, I'm here with... Erin Maurer. Erin Maurer. <clears throat> so um, Erin is a um, fabulous um, health coach, diet coach um, um, we've been walking with um, and we're actually hiking. You might see this tower here. Um, there's a really interesting looking um, tower <clears throat> and a castle on the top of a hill in Switzerland. All right. So I just heard the most amazing story from Erin about her own, you know, the way how she got into um, ketogenic metabolic therapies. And maybe we'll start going down the hill slowly okay. and, and talk about it. <laughs> all right, good. Um, so yeah, so first of all, Erin um, is uh, American, right, yes. originally, <clears throat> and but has traveled around a, a huge amount um, between the US and uh, Europe. Currently, you live in Switzerland and um, so what I heard um, was that, um, you know, when you grew up as a kid <clears throat> yourself, that your, you know, your mom, of course, you know, cooks the food and she was, you know, very health conscious, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. um, try to follow the guidelines and the nutritional advice and, you know, the more the better. And of course, the nutritional advice <clears throat> has always been high carbohydrate diets, right? The more carbs, the better, yeah. the less fat, the better. Um, and you, you know, tell me what, or tell us what, what happened um, on, on this kind of diet to your, you know, your mom and you in this, um, when you were a kid. Yeah, uh, well, when I was eight, I started getting migraines and, um, and we, uh, when I hit puberty, I developed polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and my mother also then at some point struggled very much with weight. Um, as well and we both and I did starting in puberty um, and developed a host of other symptoms that you know belong with PCOS or sometimes related to it mm -hmm. um, and and nobody could figure out why because we were doing everything exactly right mm. so, what, what kind of food are we talking about we're talking not not junk um, food right oh my yeah. word uh, very mm. low fat mm -hmm. um, I would say moderate to low pro moderate protein maybe, um, but mostly plant-based. Mm -hmm. um, very many vegetables, uh, and but most of all, uh, grains, whole grains. Okay. So always whole grains, but mm -hmm. so much. Okay. Yes. So almost like a typical, you know, di a diet that adheres to the dietary guidelines for Americans. Oh. You know, pretty much the old food pyramid. We were. All the grains and we the bread super. and everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so nothing unusual about the diet, but bad things happened, right, to yourself, to yeah. your mom. <clears throat> and the doctors yeah. really never could, mm -hmm. could figure it out. So. Okay, so of course you wouldn't know it has anything to do with, with the diet, because you're just following the guidelines. So nothing helped. All right, then you're growing up, you know, um, things don't get any better. You start a family <clears throat> mm -hmm. and um, you have your first kid. 
Uh, your daughter, right? Yeah. And um, what happened then? Oh. Well, um, she developed very early on, and it might have been from the beginning, I don't know, but uh, by the time she was three, very clearly uh, developed some symptoms of severe um, neurological illness. And hmm. uh, so, Hmm. At, at what age did you start to realize something was wrong? Mm. At three, we started recording. At three years old? Yeah. We started mm. a journal. Okay. A journal. And, at, and at three, um, it became very, clear, very clearly defined, mm -hmm. her symptoms. Mm. And so we started recording and we started visiting, visiting different doctors in different mm. countries. Right. Uh, we were in Europe at the time. Mm -hmm. And no one could help us and then they wanted to take her into the have her live in a hospital and mm. for months and months and just try out different medications and mm. um and mm. then but we had the opportunity when she was six mm -hmm. to take her to the united states to some um, specialists mm. who were familiar with this particular illness right and so she was diagnosed and was given some medication for that okay so the Diagnosis is um, in a pretty severe mental illness um, <clears throat> in a child, you know, which is unusual, and it was sort of like a, the adult version of, yes. of it. Yeah, <clears throat> quite unusual. Mm -hmm. But she went through extensive testing. I think the first round was about six months mm -hmm. with the top, really the nation's top specialist in this area. Mm. So right. you know, um, and it fit. It fit. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And of course, there's medication <clears throat> and, you know, putting a little six-year-old on medication. Heavy um, medication. So heavy medication, okay. And, but it did help a little bit, uh, somewhat? <clears throat> it did help. I would say it made the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. Although, it's, it wasn't quite life and it still could have been death. <laughs> mm. So it helped a great deal, but she was so severely ill. Mm. But I still, you know, I could not continue on in any kind of career. Right. And I ended up having to homeschool um, and mm -hmm. and travel back and forth from the U.S. to doctors right. in the U.S. and Europe. And it was quite a, mm -hmm. a trying time for all of us and for her. Okay, I'm going to have to stop for a second here and <clears throat> get out of the way. So this is real life here. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, yeah. Are there some examples? You know, as a as a kid, what you know things that happened to her or the you know symptoms, um, scenarios. Yeah. Um, so hallucination, auditory and visual hallucinations. Hmm. Um, there were times that you know we had to be aware that she was at high risk of committing suicide, hmm. um, even at a young age, which sounds strange i used to think you just have to be sad and depressed with your life mm -hmm. if you want to commit suicide but that's not the case hmm. um so i you know there was a circumstance where um she was in a, a, a mixed state and she suddenly you know went for the window and we were of course up on a higher floor of our house and i just caught her by the legs hmm. uh, and it was just terrifying. Hmm. Um, and we had to take precautionary measures and we had to hire, you know, help. We had to hire a nanny. Hmm. Um, even though I was at home hmm. full time, right. we still hmm. had to sometimes separate her, her siblings. And, and she suffered. Hmm. She suffered. I've never seen anyone suffer like that. Hmm. Oh, amazing. So that's, of course, mm, turns your entire life around and, you know, makes the whole focus yeah. taking care of your daughter. Um, so, all right, so doctors diagnosed her, gave her the appropriate medication for it. Um, it at least saved her life in, in that sense, um, but didn't really make her better. <clears throat> so it looked like she could never get onto off those no. medications. And that, and that was the thing, was the idea is that when, when someone is ill like that, it's not that they, you know, this is my understanding of what I learned, that they don't necessarily get better. Mm. And the more ill they are, they, you know, the younger they develop the, the illness, or whenever the symptoms come, mm. the more severely ill they are, mm. because it just progresses. And we were told that 
if she were to go unmedicated, that uh, episodes would continue to damage her brain mm -hmm. and that she would just become worse and worse and worse and she mm. was already, you know, mm. I couldn't even, I can't even imagine that. Uh, um, but so she had to be on the medication. So for, they were in essence at that time, that was all we had. And, and I have to say the doctors she had were brilliant mm -hmm. and they were really the best at what they did. Mm. But that's what we had right. at the time. Nobody heard of keto. Yeah. So. Mm. Wow, okay, and then so you ended up, your family traveled around mm -hmm. uh, various places and you ended up with a gynecologist um, that you consulted, you know, so for yourself. That's true. And um, you told me the gynecologist mm, said, hey, there's new re research out there um, regarding mm, PCOS, you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome and ketogenic diets. Exactly. Right. So how, how did the doctor know anything about that? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. She didn't say anything. She didn't really know much about it. She mm -hmm. did say, well, you just need to cut out the carbs. Cut out mm -hmm. all your carbs. You don't need carbs. Go keto. Right? Huh. And she, But she didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't send me anywhere. Right. And I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. I thought this weird diet on the internet, mm -hmm. you know, that I'd heard of. I was very skeptical. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, my daughter's psychiatrist at the time said, well, I've heard that this is being used to treat her particular illness. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know anything about it really either, but she was open. Mm. And, uh, and that's when I started finding information. Right. Of course, I had to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. so. so the gynecologist sort of had the right idea, <clears throat> um, but didn't really know how to implement it. Couldn't really give you any guidance or help. Yes. There was no dietitian um, that yes. they could have referred you to, but there were already kind of news out there that some doctors use ketogenic diets also for these mental illnesses. Yes. Um, so you put one and one together and started to um, dig around and I'm, I'm pretty sure textbooks, medical textbooks wouldn't have helped at all, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, so you kind of looked in social media right? um, and, um, and other places, you know, like um, you mentioned the Metabolic Health Summit, you went there and you learned about some of the radical doctors, maybe the pioneers, that are often um, ridiculed uh, by the establishment. Um, they seemed intelligent to me. They didn't seem right. radical. I mean... <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. No, I, I agree. I mean, I know many of them and they're very smart. <laughs> well, it was the first time right. that I'd ever heard mm -hmm. this in connection with, with all of the research mm -hmm. and the, you know... Oh, hmm. There was so much I didn't understand. Right. And I, w mm -hmm. I just, I, I won't go into it yeah. so much, but I was able to find the resources again on the internet because mm -hmm. there was nothing, mm -hmm. you know, no one there to help me. Right. Um, and I was, you know, able to, for example, uh, Christopher Palmer, Chris Palmer. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. he was okay. very great help to me. He doesn't even know this. Mm -hmm. Um, so he helped you because you watched videos that he took and... I did, I watched everything he had. Hmm. Um, and then I found Stephen Finney, mm -hmm. um, who um, was, for me, I think I watched everything hmm. he has that I could find that's available. Hmm. Um, and from his, it was more from Stephen Finney, but from uh, mostly from what he shared, I was hmm. able to try and piece together what I hoped was a well-formulated ketogenic right. diet based on whole food nutrition. Right. But it was me. But okay. after, with their help and without them. Right. Yeah. So basically try to figure out how to actually do this. Right? How to yeah. do a ketogenic diet and, you know, bits and pieces on the internet. Yeah. You found and you did it um, just like that. Um, I, I'm sure it was not easy. Um, and um, then what happened? So you put... So you put not only your daughter on a keto diet, but also yourself, the yes. whole family, kind of? Or um, yes, they actually were good sports mm -hmm. and are very supportive and mm -hmm. were wanting to support us. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone did it and mm -hmm. my, well, I benefited from it greatly. Mm -hmm. um, so I was relieved of almost all of my symptoms and the other ones are so minimal that you know, they're not bothersome at all. And, and they mm. continue to get better mm -hmm. um, as I stay ketogenic. My daughter, though... Um, mm. How old was she at that time? She was about 15 when 15. she started. Okay. Mm, so yeah. 
15 severe mental illness on a bunch of drugs um, that didn't yes. really cure they both her. Didn't cure her, yes. no. And she right. was not able to fully function right. in society, you know, and she was not mm. happy. And she was not in school, had to be homeschooled. Homes yeah, right. very okay. bright. But it's not the same when you, when it's, if it's choice, mm. it's one thing. But when right. you have to because you can't cope, it's something else. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so how quickly did you see any changes? Yeah, <laughs> um, it was a couple of months that mm -hmm. my daughter was ketogenic. Mm -hmm. um, that after a couple of months, she she actually forgot to take her medicine. Mm -hmm. And normally, if she'd forget to take her medicine within just the first couple of days, she would have a massive reaction, and everybody would know, including herself. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, but she a week went by, and. After a week, she realized, she came to me and said, Oh, mom, I realized that I haven't taken my medicine and it's been a week. And at first I thought, <gasps> oh my goodness, you know, um, mm. but she felt she hadn't had any symptoms. Mm. And um, so, you know, we talked with her doctor and, and she was able to, you know, slowly we off her medications. But it was from that point on, and perhaps it had happened sooner, but, mm. you know, she was still on her meds. So, you know. But it was from that point on that she no longer had any symptoms mm. and was able to be off her medication without these symptoms. Mm. And so eventually, fast forward a couple of years later, and she saw a doctor again who um, accompanied her through some years of her youth, her mm -hmm. childhood. He knew her, was familiar with her, and he saw her over the period of a year. Mm. And there was nothing, basically the whole year, no medication, symptom free huh. so there was no sign of the severe illness and he's you know she stays on the diet though mm -hmm. she needs to stay on the diet right. um but you know it was kind of like oh call me if anything ever but you know wow amazing. So. <laughs> okay unbelievable all right and she's you know um, in school <clears throat> and she's mm -hmm. fully functioning mm -hmm. and um it's changed her life right. it's changed her lives and now she's 19 mm -hmm. um going to college yeah. um all right um, well, and it also, the experience also kind of changed, of course, your life, um, you know, you had to take, um, pretty much have no career. Okay, another thing coming here. Mm. Mm. I should hit you right. <laughs> All right. Um, so your career was on pause pretty much for the entire time, of course, uh -huh. because you had to full time take care of, of your daughter. Um, and suddenly you don't anymore. <clears throat> what happens then to you? Well, <laughs> what, what do you do? <laughs> Brief mm -hmm. midlife crisis. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, I, I had to think about what I wanted to do. Mm. Uh, suddenly I had me time um, and was able to have, you know, the strength and the mental energy and the health. Mm. The health to actually think about becoming the person that I wanted to be. Mm. Um, and um, and I I just knew I knew I wanted to 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 give what I'd been given, mm -hmm. and and having experienced different things like you know being overweight, even though I'm following the guidelines, you know the nutritional guidelines and eating low fat and you know high whole grain and you know no added sugar and things like that, you know feeling like a failure when when that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and not knowing where to turn, mm -hmm. and and having and having the doctors not know. Mm -hmm. um, I just I know what it's like to feel helpless, mm -hmm. to not know how to find help, um, and so I said I want to help these people who who feel that way and who have given up, mm -hmm. or feel that there's no hope. And I wanted to help the people who had been as ill as I had been, and especially as ill as my daughter mm -hmm. has been, or anywhere mm -hmm. in between. Um, I wanted to help them to know that there was. There is something that they can do and something that will work and that they don't need to just pump themselves up on meds and mm. lay down and wait to die, basically. Mm. Um, and it's not that I'm against medication. It's just... Mm. Um, and this is, this is affordable. Anyone can do it. Mm. This is an equalizer. I feel that this is a great equalizer mm. in, uh, in healthcare. Mm. Um, and, and that's another reason that I, I want to do it, to make it available to those people mm. who, who don't have the, right. the wherewithal to pay for the expensive doctor or go mm. to the expensive retreat or whatever. Mm. 
you know right and mm. okay yeah so essentially you're working with um people with um, all kinds of diseases um, that are treatable um, by ketogenic metabolic therapies yeah. um, and, yeah. and you have helped us out with um, people with polycystic kidney disease so you're working with some of them um, so they're all um, uh, private clients essentially yeah. um, amazing yeah and you know those are all folks that are probably just as stumped as you were <clears throat> when you started out and um, uh, but now they have you all right Good. Well, Erin, thank you very much um, yeah. for this amazing story. Thanks for letting me share it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank you.